بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم so next thing we'll try to uh, see the configuration of the management vlans now already we discussed the management vlan is like a separate vlan we'll be using like in my example i'll be using vlan 100 and from this vlan generally we assign this vlan for it users or it department users so the responsibility of them is to manage this device from where we can telnet or ssh to the device or even you place some kind of syslog servers from where your all your log messages will be sent We'll talk about syslog in the services model and also some SNMP where you where you maintain some monitoring uh, software or monitoring server from where you are going to monitor these devices. Generally like SNMP traffic we call it as. So you want this traffic should be separated from a normal traffic because I don't want to place these uh, pieces in, a, in my accounts department and where your data traffic is going. So we'll be using a separate VLAN for management in general. Now to verify that, I'll be using the same topology. So if you see the configurations in our previous lab, I have configured the VLAN 10, VLAN 20 and VLAN 30. And these VLANs, let's say we have used for accounts, marketing and sales departments. So this is like a part of pre-configuration. So I'm going to use the, uh, these configurations are present already. So additionally, what I did is I'm connecting two computers. Let's say one is my laptop from where I'm connecting and one is my server, maybe my syslog server or my SNMP server, which is connecting on port number 20 and 21. So I want this port number 20 and 21 should be a member of a separate VLAN. So I'm going to create a VLAN 100, which will be used for management purposes. So let's see how to do that management, uh, basically assigning the ports in the management VLAN. So I'll be creating a VLAN 100, which will be used for management and will be assigning an IP address because if you are trying to access my switch remotely for telnet or SSH, basically you need to have an IP address for the switch. So I'll be assigning an IP address to the switch. Uh, possibly I'll be using from 192.168.10. subnet. So I'm using this 10 dot subnet here for management purposes. And also we'll be configuring the VTV password. We, we, have, we know how to configure the VTV password already for, and we'll verify the telnet access here from a management PC. So configuration wise, we need to create a VLAN 100 and give the name as management. This is same like a normal creating a VLAN. And then we are going to assign port number 20 and 21 will be assigned to VLAN 100. So now these ports will be a member of VLAN 100 now. And then we'll be uh, configuring some IP uh, for the VLAN 100. So we inter interface VLAN 100 and give some IP. So I'm using 192.168.10.50 will be the IP address I'll be using for the switch. This is for the IP to the switch. And I'll go to any one of the PC, I'll try to telnet. And for telnet, we also need to configure the VTP password. So I'm going to configure the VTP password and the enable password for or verifying the telnet access. So most of these configurations, you know, so management VLAN is just like a normal any other VLAN. So the configuration commands are still the same, but the difference is we'll be using this VLAN dedicated for management purpose only. So let's go and do that. So I do have this topology pre-configured here. So if you try to verify, we, we created a VLAN 10 and this is using 192.168.1. subnet and this is 192.168.2.subnet and 3.subnet, the VLAN 10, 20 and 30. So I connected port number 20 and 21 on these two computers, these two computers, which are will be which will be using 192.168.10.subnet and I'll be using VLAN 100 here. So the first thing I'll try to see if the VLANs are pre-configured because I may have saved this, so the passwords are already there. So there are a few configurations present here. Okay, so let's go ahead to the uh, let's go and verify the command line. So I do have this VLAN 10 2030. I'm not going to disturb that based on my previous lab configurations because I just want to be a part of this lab because you know I just want you to know that you know these are separated. So the first step is I'll be creating a VLAN 100. I'll give some name as management. Any name you can do, generally management VLAN. And the next thing is I'll be uh, doing is, let's say we need to assign the ports. 
So as per my topology, this port number 20 and port number 21 are connecting to these two computers. Uh, I already connected, so if you just move here, this is port number 20 and this is, you can see that is 21 is moving there. So port number 21. So I'll say range command, interface port number 20 and 21, switch port mode access, and then we say switch port access VLAN 100. So I'm assigning the ports in the VLAN 100. So the next step is we need to assign the IP interface VLAN 100. So the VLAN 1, sorry, 100 will be up automatically. But if you remember in the basic VLAN 1, we used for management in the basic uh, configuration labs. But generally, that is not a best practice. So we're, we'll be using VLAN 100 and we'll assign the IP. So the IP, I'm using 10 dot subnet here because the PCs are already pre-configured with 10 dot subnet. The shutdown is not required because by default it is up. So the PCs are pre-configured with 10.1 and 10.2. So I'll be using a 10.50 will be the IP address of my switch. And also make sure that the VLAN one is in shutdown state because we, are, we don't want to use the VLAN one in general. So VLAN one is something uh, recommended not to use. And anyway, it will be shut down by default, but still, you know, we can give that command for verification. So VLAN 1 is down and VLAN 10 I'm using here. And if we try to verify the reachability to my other PCs, okay, not 1.1, so 10.1. 10.1 is the PC connecting over there. You can see I'm able to reach my 10.1 PC and 10.2 PC. 10.2 is a server. Okay. So we do have reachability, which confirms that uh, we do have reachability from this VLAN 100 interface to this two. Of course, you cannot reach from this department because they are in different subnets, which means management. And we don't have any IP configured for other VLANs. So, so we don't use this IP for management. We will be using this IP for management here. And the next thing is we'll be configuring the VTV password. I think it is already pre-configured, but let me do it once again login and then enable password in way one two three let's say now once i do this the next step is we'll verify so i'll go to any one of this pc let's say i'm using my laptop from where i'll be managing and it is connecting on and the ip is 10.1 and it's connecting on port number 20 which is a part of vlan 500 sorry vlan 100 so i'll try to reach my switch ip so what is the IP I have used here? VLAN 100, IP address is 10.50. So I, I must have reachability to 10.50. Sorry, I typed 1.50 there. So it has to be 10.50. You can see I do have reachability, which means I can log into my switch from this PC. It's asking me the VTY password. The VTY password is NY123 and the enable password is also NY123. From here, you can see I can verify, I can manage my switch remotely from the management VLAN. So basically, this is like a best practice to have a separate VLAN for management. Uh, even though you can still use this VLAN 10 and you can assign an IP to VLAN 10 also, you can still manage from here also, but that is not a recommended practice. Okay, we can still use any other VLAN for management also, but normally it is recommended to separate to use a separate VLAN only for management traffic.